Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our human game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're taking a look at the third game of the women's candidates final between Zhong Yi Tan and Ting Yi Lei. Um, well, the first two games were thrilling, unexpected results both times. Uh, so what could the third game bring up? Well, the opening was certainly a surprise. Well, Zhong Yi Tan had played d4 uh, c4 rather in the first game but she switched back to a normal uh, uh, 1d4 and um, well in the first game we'd had uh, 1c4 and then e5 and I'd sort of assumed that um, if uh, Ting Yi Lei was playing 1e5 then she wasn't going to play any sort of uh, 1d5 system against 1d4 she was probably going to play a Nimzo Indian um, but that seemed to be completely wrong because after 1d4 um, Ting Yi Lei played d5, c4, e6, knight c3, and then c5, and we are in a Tarash. Now, as far as I can see, Ting Yi Lei had never played the Tarash before. What I had noted in the, um, in the preview was that um, after c takes d5, e takes d5, knight f3, um, Zhong Yi Tan has had quite a bit of experience against the newfangled knight f6, which in the pre-computer age was thought to be a total blunder, but now seems to be uh, very, very interesting, maybe even better than the uh, classical move knight c6. But I've seen that um, Zhong Yi Tan played this move d takes c5, which is really the sort of move that, um, uh, that aims for um, uh, a slight edge, safe edge for white, no chances to lose, yeah, just uh, slight chances to win, basically. And, um, well, it seems like um, uh, Ting Yi Lei decided that this might be a very good way of just actually realising an easy draw as black. If you're willing to uh, just to, uh, to suffer just a little bit and uh, willing to play just for a draw, not really be looking for winning chances, then, yeah, this could be the perfect opening. Now, I thought that I was actually quite up to date with the... Uh, um, with the theory because, uh, well, I drew a game against uh, Vichy Anand with black in this line. Um, but then I checked uh, the, the time of the game and it was back in 2014. I find that hard to believe. Can't believe so much time has passed. But uh, it means that I'm not actually completely up to date anymore. And, uh, well, some new things have happened since. So d4, knight a4, bishop takes c5. Um, yeah, black has to go after this pawn. Um, knight takes c5, queen a5 check. Um, and now there's various ideas. Queen d2 is possible, but bishop d2 has been the uh, the most interesting move. Queen takes c5, and now white's got a number of choices. Um, against me, Vichy played e3, and, uh, well, takes, takes, queen b4 check. There takes bishop d2, knight e7. Even against a super class player like Vichy, I was not at all afraid of playing this position. And actually, I got a very, very nice position indeed. So um, that was uh, that's no problem at all for black. But um, rook c1, also interesting. You can play rook c1, queen b6, and e3. But in general, you're also ending up with an exchange of queens in a pretty even-looking position. You know, and, uh, well, white's got the two bishops, a slight edge, but nothing serious. But b4 has been, um, um, well, tried by a lot of players, including uh, Ding Liren, the, um, um, the best a Chinese player obviously going to fight for the world championship in uh, in a few weeks time so also interesting you know when um, when uh, this might you know just end up being some sort of Chinese speciality there what's the idea of it well the idea is that if black takes with the uh, the knight on b4 we go rook c1 and then a number of possibilities queen d6 we go e3 and uh, the point is that d takes c3, bishop c3. Yeah, we've got a lot of uh, of things hanging here, basically. It looks like, um, you know, black can um, uh, can sort of survive. Well, um, uh, oh, this was a game Leela against uh, Stockfish, actually. We got queen d1, king d1, knight a2, bishop g7, knight c1, king c1, uh, bishop d7, fe, rook c8 check, king d2, f6, bishop d3, knight e7 bishop h8 there we are king f7 and then knight e5 check and we get this position after all that effort we get white girls got the two bishops this one's hanging got rook f1 check coming in white's a little bit better but uh, stockfish managed to uh, to hold this of course as uh, as stockfish always does but yeah i mean you, you know knight takes b4 is is not so bad but uh, you know you really do need to be very well prepared because there's a lot of um, of tricky lines in there um so queen b6 
has tended to be the main line. Queen F5 has also been played, not bad at all, and and, uh, and the engines were sort of uh, also choosing this uh, a few times as their uh, as their main move. But Queen B6 is a very nice uh, safe move, keeping the B pawn under attack, keeping the D4 pawn protected. Queen A4, um, threatening B5, so we just play A6 to uh, to stop it, um, and now E3 from White. Um, so you're opening up the line of the bishop and you're threatening b5 and b5 is quite awkward the, the knight on c6 is attacked and of course the pawn on a6 is pinned because a8 is hanging but yeah I mean there's some pretty uh, subtle um, yeah engine assisted thinking that's gone into uh, to this line and black takes on e3 f takes c3 obviously bishop takes c3 would allow queen takes b4 check and after f takes c3 then rook b8 um yeah this is a, a recent uh recent ish wrinkle um bishop d7 very natural move to start off with but uh after b5 knight e7 um yeah there's a couple of things that the uh, engines liked and leela really liked this move queen a3 just stepping out of the pin uh and after bishop b5 knight d4 takes rook takes f1 um yeah i mean there's quite a lot of counterplay happening here i mean there's uh um yeah stuff like knight f5 the rooks coming into c1 um you know followed by bishop a5 and rook c7 hard for black to get castled really because uh you know if you play knight f6 then this knight on e7 is hanging to the queen on a3 so yeah i mean actually uh um leela beat uh, ethereal in um in one of my uh one of my uh, seven minute plus uh plus uh, three second game so uh you know not um not uh, uh super slow but not uh you know not total blitz or bullet either and um yeah ethereal was just really uh really uh suffering a little bit in uh, in this position so um uh this is not particularly nice but rook b8 is one of those now it's very much an engine move i think you know just the engine understands that white actually ha the black actually has got time you can play a move like this just negating some tactical threats and you've still got time eventually to uh to get your pieces out and castle kingside and of course, you know, you're looking at white structure here. You know, white's taking on a fair amount of uh, of weaknesses. You know, this pawn on e3 is uh, is quite ugly. So white needs to keep on going. You can't just sort of uh, castle and then uh, say, well, I've got the two bishops. I'm better, really, because, uh, yeah, I mean, all of these, the queen on a4, pawn on e3, bishop on d2, it doesn't really make sense at the moment. So b5 is the move. a takes b5 and then queen takes b5. Uh, the engines were, were sort of looking at bishop b5, um, knight e7, and then this move, uh, um, this mysterious move, queen b4 in actual fact. Very <laughs> unusual idea. The idea is after castles, we go bishop c6 and black's actually losing material. Very unusual tactic. Because um, if you go queen takes c6, of course, I take on e7. And if you go queen takes b4, um, I take back with the bishop on, on b4. And then, yeah, you know, knight c6 will allow bishop takes f8. So very unusual move. But after queen b4, we go bishop d7. Takes, takes, queen b6, rook b6, castles, a4. It's a little edge for white because, um, well, you're going to get this past a pawn. And uh, you're probably going to need to play this pawn to c5 just to make sure that, oops, that you can get your bishop to c6 and stuff like that. But, um, um, yeah, the engines were holding it, you know, without too much difficulty there. Um, so yeah, I mean, Bishop B5 is okay. Queen B5 is the, um, is the main move there, basically. And, uh, you know, what has White got here? Well, you've got a bit of freedom now, you know, playing B5, swapped off the Queens. Bit of pressure against the Knight, lead and development, slightly ugly pawn structure. You know, it's clear that, um, um, that if White's got an edge in this position, it's not a huge amount. I mean, we're still very much into theory here. Um, now, there was a game, uh, Shevchenko against uh, Song. Uh, at the Beale tournament, where Black played Bishop d7. That's okay, um, but it's not particularly necessary in actual fact, because uh, as Lay shows, Knight f6 is quite nice. And um, here, uh, this was a, a crucial moment somehow, and uh, Tan played Knight e5, which is a novelty in this position. Um, I do actually wonder whether this was just misremembering some theory. Of course, you know, bear in mind that uh, Tan was not at all expecting this from uh, from Black, I'm pretty sure. So um, it could well be that she, she sort of misremembered uh, her theory here. I mean, the engines um, um, want to play simply castles, castles, and then uh, rook fc1. 
just putting some pressure on the knight here. I've got a couple of ideas. Rook d8. Um, the engines feel that you can just give up a, a pawn like this and that you're okay. Probably the more natural human move is to go bishop d7. I mean, humans don't really give up pawns just like that. Um, we go a4. A um, little move like h6, for example, a5 and rook bc8. And, um, well, you know, white's got a little bit of pressure. I mean, this pawn on b7 this week, white's got the two bishops as well. So, you know, that's uh, definitely a little edge for white. And uh, I don't know. I mean, if you ask me, would you fancy playing this against Magnus as black? Yeah, maybe I'd, I wouldn't be so uh, so keen. I think you'd need to, um, you know, it would be handy to have, uh, to have had a little bit of uh, practice playing this out as black to, um, um, you know, to, to really... Uh, uh, make sure you hold it properly um the engines really seem to be uh sort of uh just playing the rook to e8 and then sort of waiting to see what white did before committing the pieces sometimes going back to a8 to attack the pawn on a5 sometimes moving the bishop out and then moving the bishop back again you know it's uh, uh essentially the engines consider that black's solid and that there's not too many problems but yeah you know i, I think uh yeah you could definitely play this for um for white i think um Knight e5, you know, feels like um, a nice move, you know, sticking the knight, attacking the knight on c6, trying to punish black for not having played bishop d7. But um, actually, um, uh, Lay played uh, castles pretty quickly. And I think this was here that Zhongyi Tan spent about um, uh, half an hour uh, before taking on c6. And I think here kind of realized that things weren't, weren't quite right. Um, actually, Dragon wants to play knight back to f3, which shows you what the, what the engines kind of think about, um, about this move knight e5. Um, Zhongyi Tan took on c6 there takes bishop takes c6 and now bishop a6 and this is the the point really white isn't getting castled and of course you know there's there's just uh, lots of open lines for the uh, the black rooks to get him you know involved i mean it's pretty clear that uh, that uh, white's got no advantage whatsoever here so bishop f3 was played pretty natural uh, get the bishop um, back protecting g4 helping you to play king f2 maybe you know play bishop e2 you never know um I, I was just expecting rook b2 to be honest that seemed pretty natural here here and then uh, somewhere i don't know rook e8 for example is one idea um rook fc8 maybe maybe i don't know h5 something like that just to uh, to play knight g4 after you know it, it's all um it's all sort of possible really i mean that was what i was expecting um uh, Lay played it, um, yeah, maybe a little bit more cautiously. I don't know, but um, but perfectly fine too. Rook e8, um, king f2. Um, yeah, I mean, bishop e2 might have been vaguely a bit more worth it, maybe. You know, just to uh, swap off the bishops and, uh, and and then try and come with the king. But you know, I, mean, I think I had a game of um, of uh, dragon against uh, stockfish, and uh, yeah, you know, this went pretty well really. Again, the rooks, you know, heading for uh, for here somehow. So um, uh, king f2 was played, and now rook b2, rook d1, knight e4 check. White is a pawn up, a pass pawn up, um, but, you know, it, it's really nothing at all here. Uh, black's got, there's no way that white's going to get enough firepower to force anything through. One pair of rooks is definitely going to be exchanged, and then you've got very, very little indeed. I mean, yesterday there was a game, um, Michael Adams against, um, uh, I think it's Andrei Vol Volokitin, um, and um, uh, and uh, Mickey managed to win a game with uh, Rook and Bishop versus uh, Rook and Bishop, opposite coloured bishops, where he had an extra pawn. Um, and he started from a more promising situation, um, although by the time he won it, I, I was actually thinking that he was running out of uh, of play. But uh, you know, it is possible to win those positions, um, you know, with with uh, with rooks on. But Black's got a very you know a number of very safe defensive formations. So yeah, you know this. Uh, really felt pretty much like um, a guaranteed draw. So rook b1 was played and then this nice little move, rook eb4. Um, actually, I mean, the engines are just saying, oh, I don't care, you know, just take and go f6 and, uh, you know, we're, we're not worrying at all. I mean, you know, this rook can always come to e6, you defend the bishop on a6 and then nothing's ever going to happen to you. So, you know, the engines are not at all worried. Um, uh, I think, uh, you know, lay... I had the feeling, uh, you know, that she was uh, really trying to be as accurate as possible. Um, you know, again, I think those nerves about this being such an important event, not wanting to to give White any freedom or any chance to grind for uh, for many many moves, I think, was playing a role. But actually, she she ended up playing this um, quite nicely. F five surprised me slightly uh, to open up this diagonal somehow, but um, but actually, she played it very aggressively. So King e one, Bishop d three. Just basically nailing it and making sure that you are going to swap off that um, that uh, the rooks. 
Um, a5 played, g5, rook a1, and now rook b1 check. And, uh, you know, the point is really that, you know, if you go a7, well, I just play the bishop to e4, and uh, you're never going to manage to worm your king all the way to here. You know, we just uh, we just have to stop you at some point, you know, maybe bring the king to d7 or something, and then you can't get through anymore. And, you know, a bishop on e4 will be covering the uh, the whole diagonal and also protecting the king's side as well. So, um, yeah, they played a few more moves. Uh, bishop g3, g4, king d2, king f7, king e6. King d7, a6, king c6, bishop c5, king b5, a7, king a6, king e5, king b7, king d6, bishop d3. And they agreed a draw there because, uh, yeah, absolutely nothing is going to happen here. Of course, you know, this is also the wrong colored uh, uh, pawn, uh, rook's pawn for the bishop. So actually, black only needs to, uh, um, yeah, to swap off a bishop and those three pawns for these three pawns, and it's just a draw. So, yeah, nothing to play for, really. So there we are, uh, less exciting maybe than the um, than the other games, but um, actually quite a significant theoretical little battle. Um, you know, knight e5 was a novelty, not a very good one, but uh, I think that uh, the main thing was really that uh, Lay showed that she was very well prepared with black for this line. Um, really knew all the little wrinkles, rook b8, all of that. And um, yeah, you know, uh, just um, neutralised, um, uh, I think, Zhang Yi Tan's normal opening quite nicely. Um, going to be quite interesting actually to see whether uh, Lei actually keeps on playing this, keeps on hitting uh, Zhong Yi Tan on this and asks her to um, to change system. I reckon that uh, we're going to see a different uh, opening from Lei if uh, Zhong Yi Tan plays 1d4 again. I think this was a, a hit and run. Uh, she knew, I think, that if um, she played the Tarash, the Zhong Yi Tan would play her system. Uh, d takes c5 and then she was very well prepared against that but um uh, i don't think that she uh, particularly will want to play a tarash you know for throughout the rest of the uh, throughout the rest of the match so that's quite interesting It'll also be very interesting to see whether jongi tan plays 1d4 again um or uh, whether she decides now i want to play uh, 1c4 or, or one knight f3 so there we are you know the match is poised at one and a half one and a half uh, going to be interesting to see what uh, lay comes up with uh, 1d4 was pretty effective really she got a very good position she also played the resulting positions very well so i am actually expecting her to keep on going with uh, with 1d4 and then it's up to Zhong Yi tan whether she's going to carry on with uh, with uh, the queen's gambit accepted or switch to something different well, join me tomorrow on Mastodon. I'm uh, sort of uh, live tooting on the games as they happen. Join me there and, uh, you know, we'll uh, see what happens. And then, uh, well, I'll definitely uh, post another video covering uh, how the game went. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Thanks very much, everyone. If you like the video, give a like, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my book, my course, anything I've done. And uh, otherwise... Thanks very much for watching and hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.